The approach of Homo Divinicus to time is a relationship. That's all it is. It's not special. It doesn't take a degree. It takes awareness, vibrational truth, understanding relationships with things around you. Everything defines you, combines you, destroys you, creates you. Now you let it and allow it and choose it to be. You are the master of your own world. You know these by now. However you play, whatever you trumpet with, whatever you decorated, it's your truth. Truth creates realities. That's all it is. It's quite simple. But getting past the mind that's telling you and selling you stories of time is difficult. And you can see that. We yell and scream. We motherfuck you. We console you. We compassion you. We cuddle you up. And then we break you down again so you can get off your pity party wagon. And you can start to see that you are the reality through what you truly tell yourself is. In the now, there is no telling yourself what it is. There's no delay. There is no time to reference things as labels. Are you okay? There's no things to reference as labels. You don't see a scenario and then quickly understand it from a logical standpoint of definition to sift through some filters and make sure your sweet ass is safe from the perils of creation. As you know by now, there are no perils. There is life, and that's all. There is reflection, and that's it. Vibration begets vibration. You have an experience. Here you are moving along forever in your nows as existence. Quite simple, quite easy, but quite uh, purposeless. Hmm? No fun in it, because you can't have a, an ego about things. You got to become undefined, no edges, because you are the edge. You can't stable yourself by labeling yourself any longer. You can, because you're a forgotten God and well-versed at it, so it's easy for you to choose your separation instantaneously and then pretend like you're actually fucking smart and do it in a way that appears to the ego, which is selling you another story, that you're really not being an ego, but you are. Because, see, when you're labeling, when you're calling something to the table as something to be referenced objectively in time, well, that's slighted in the idea. In this way, when we mean slighted, let's look at the idea of slants. When you put your own shade on something, huh? You inject it with your own light and it becomes its own thing to you, right? What is that? So you look at an idea and you're labeling it, but if you're labeling it with the relationship of Homo Galacticus, Homo sapien, it matters not, then you're understanding that as a label and you have to command it. And if it pisses you off any other way that someone else is commanding that same truth in their own definition, well, then you're fucked. Then it's you. All you're doing is catcalling yourself into the same fucking version. That's all. It becomes brutally honest. You got to stop it. And we know why. You know why. You don't want to stop it because you have to be empty. You have to be nothing. You have to be no success. You have to be not accomplished. You have to be the seamless now with no labels. But yet now time is in a relationship to Homo Divinicus. You are now choice and you are now to choose. And each one of those is the purest relationship possible, and it's not going to be a couch in any kind of limitation because the relationship is unmeasurable. Time becomes immeasurable. The relationship that you call something as an object is no longer defined as outside of you, externalized. Don't forget Aristotle. Objective, subjective. Excellent teacher. Master of humanity, truly. Understanding the idea that you are the subjective point of view of your creation. People keep blaming now things out there. It did it to me. It didn't do dick to you. You accepted the vibration. 
but the vibration, the vibration, the vibration that you're equating to that detailed situation through a filter equates that cause or effect. That's the default of humanity. But to let go of that struggle became, becomes master, full work of reverence that is so now. See, it is difficult to be effort. It takes work, it takes time, it takes research. You look like a hero from a standpoint, especially if you're successful. You are that of the image, on the good side of things on earth. Even if you're not a big money person, if you're a hard worker, you got a job. Oh, especially the Italians, they're gonna fucking love you to no end, right? Because you're out there doing your job. You have pride. Hmm? See, work is easy. Because when you're in the now, maybe whistling while you work to be a dwarf today, then what you're going to get is a passing of time. You're going to realize that when you are in the moment working, time kind of passes by, doesn't it? When you dread your work, but once you accept it, it just passes right along and you look like a hard worker. And you are. You take your breaks, you take your coffee breaks or cigarette breaks or whatever you do to work through and get through the day. See, that's effort. What is really excruciating, excruciating is effortless. We're still tuning in, pardon us. Hmm? Effortless is painful. That's hard work. Why? Because action is considered purpose. Doing no action is considered lazy sitting around on your fat ass, eating Doritos on the couch. You hear that quote? Couch potato eating Doritos, playing video games for the rest of your life, and yet the video game people, the geeks and the gurus are richer than most people could have ever imagined because they use a different approach. They used intelligence. Right? Okay. But that's neither here nor there. So let's look at effort as opposed to effortless. Let's understand what being is. My being, to reiterate, of course, my being is not defined by my action of physical movement, physical thought, doing something. My being is default, okay? I accept reality is because I have no reason not to accept it because I don't have filters, right? I'm the everlasting, unconditional flowing through me and I through all that is, right? The one or all or one, you got it. So in that idea, I don't have the idea to do because I am and you are doing the same. Each and every one of you are being God. Hmm? But see the doing and action feels good, doesn't it? Because you've been taught that. Did you do your homework? Did you go to school? Did you brush your teeth? Did you make your bed? Did you put your clothes away? Did you clean your room? Did you do your homework? Did you ride your bike? I rode my bike today. Well, that's fun. That's not work. Even if you did, if it was playtime, uh, you got to have at least, at least five hardworking moments that make up for one playtime. That's humanity's balance. Because see, hard work means production. And you have to produce as a part of society to keep the human species going as if you have a distant future waiting for you. <laughs> no, <laughs> there is no future. There is only now, right? Okay. So let's talk about the effort and the effortless in depth. Roxy is channeling. To some, she's channeling a ass off. She channels six days a week, hmm? usually on and off. 
but definitely four days for the slide classes, six times over four days, plus the follow-ups with you guys. Part of your idea. And straighten this out, straighten that out, Roxy's there. That's an action. Does Roxy effort? She's being that. She's being that moment. This morning, she gets a text at 8 o'clock in the morning from Tamsin that's down in the Cape, needs to have a talk. Roxy says, absolutely. She's like, oh, thank you. Why? It's the perfect moment. There's no action. I'm not doing this out of effort. There's no effort in Roxy getting together and shooting the shit with one of her fellow gods. That's an action, yet it is being. That's effortless. See, effort is doing something you don't want to do. But you're convincing, selling yourself a story that says, oh, down the road, it looks good. Because I'll have this. Where's this all going? Well, if I do this, this, and this, then I'll be that. And you guys are still looking for whenever that's coming. But that can't come because when you are looking for that, that's emptiness. You are creating lack. And you'll never be fulfilled with the objects that are outside of you that lie in time because time is objectified. So therefore, it's never now, right? Tomorrow never comes, though. Simple. Okay. So, so this effortless motion is the action of the moment. So let's look at Rebecca. Rebecca's funny little honey, fiance. He's at the border and they turn him away because he tells them the truth. He wants to marry this woman. And he has some stuff that looks like he's going to stay a long time, right? So they reject him. And now he has to come in on a fiancé passport. Mm, story. There's some changes coming. But see, if she takes effort to make it happen faster, and they start brainstorming to make it happen, they're going to fulfill their time and space with lack and effort and not a good time. Because they need to get together because they are not accepting reality is. As if distance has anything to do with unconditional. Space is created for an experience, but there is no difference, no space in between the one and the all. Right? Because it's all what? Vibration. And there's no distance between vibration. Vibration creates Space. You have space and time. Mm -hmm. Exciting. So you have an illusion of space. So it is feeling to the human self of Rebecca that there's a distance between who, her and her lover. The idea of Grisa. But they will come together again more fast than they can imagine. Kind of nowish when they really get together, they're going to go, well, that wasn't bad. They're going to look at that in hindsight. But in the time that they are not together becomes a chasm. And to close that gap becomes effort out of lack because they got to hurry it along. And that actually keeps it farther away from their experience because they're not allowing the magic to happen. Because the logical mind has a way, has a pattern, has uh, advice has uh, uh, things to do in action that are effort that'll make that happen. Of course, they can actually make it happen. All of you have been to work and you've got promoted, you got paychecks, you got an outcome, you went out and got blasted on the weekend and started it all over again. You all have done that through effort. Effort works. Why? Because you're gods. Everything works because you're truth. But you don't want to be that god anymore. You don't want to be relating to humanity as a human. You want to be relating to humanity as a God, right? An individual singularity. So you got to understand the rea realities of relationships to things, objects that you covet outside of you. And you got to understand the truth of that through you by accepting it. So if Rebecca takes no action, except the action. And if Rebecca, listen close. Stops letting the diarrhea be seeped in her ear and accepts that person as they are and taking no action on a salvation 
then Griza will come with bells on quicker than you can imagine. But if you're fucking around with the process, then you're going to need a bus to get back to fucked, and Griza's going to miss it. So, be honest with yourself in the moment. And that self doesn't go after things. Things come to it to play. You attract. You don't repel. If you are lack, you are repelling what you attract. You're putting a buffer in between you and your reality of expansion, your joy, because you're using lack to buffer the two selves, right? Okay. So when you effort, you chasm. When you allow, you allow creation to flow through you. Now, we're not talking necessarily allowing to bit someone else because they're being a dick. Let's put that aside. The allowance of you to move, take that beautiful action like Roxy. Hey, I can be ready in 15 minutes. Are you there? Hell yeah. Boom, they have a session, right? Have a little one-on-one. -on -one. That was effortless. There wasn't a thought process in it. It was presented to Roxy upon awakening, and she said, yes. Do you get it? It's presented to her. So you are waiting for things to be presented, and boredom seeps in, and you're going, I'm not accomplishing anything, and I don't feel good because this emptiness sucks. And that's what you need to pay attention to because I taught you that last night. I showed you what the emptiness does to you. It cycles you. Hmm? It puts you right back into the cog. You're on the conveyor belt. Grind it up at the end, shit out, and then start all over again. Yay, what a ride. But what you want to do is understand yourself in the relationship of passion in the moment that allows you. And passion is not defined by a career. I'm a healer. Shit like that. You're not here to do anything except the moment. Because there is nothing to do in time. Time is a reference point that is distance for you for an experience that is occurring always when. Ready? Ready? When? 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 Now. Okay. So the relationship with your understanding of yourself and passion is something that you do is absolutely effortless. The being is moving, making phone calls doing production work for others at work, but you love it. It's not an effort to you. And if you are not in that conjunction, understand the truth behind that relationship. I'll get to that in a minute, but let's stay on effort for a minute. Hang on. We're going to talk about jobs. Jobs. You have a job, job, J-O-B. I need a job, 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 job fair, job, 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 job. You have a job? Do you have a job? What do you do? 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 Oh, really? Let me assess you. Okay. You're in my money bracket. We can play. You want to come over to the weekend and watch the game? Look at my man cave. Exquisite. Okay. So the effortless motif is passion in the moment. But the physical action doesn't define you doing. That's not purpose. What is that? That's communing. Communing with reality. When Roxy's channel, she's pulling all of herself into the moment. The whole self of her, the whole self of Roxy, the whole self of whoever else wants to fucking play. That's a vibrational match to experience this moment. Same as with you. You think you're picking up a pencil, writing the pencil? You're giving the pencil an awareness that it understands itself. When you're writing on the paper, the paper was a tree. Now it's the paper, and the paper goes, holy shit, I'm alive again. Now I know myself as this. Really? It's inert. It's not living. <laughs> Don't you understand that every action, every movement... Is so much fucking work, it's unbelievable. I mean, you have to create molecules. You got to create them into a frequency. So they appear through the idea of the event horizon, dark to light, right? Guys are still fucking around black holes, right? 
And then you got to vibrate that light into a frequency of gross matter that fits a compressed idea of third density. And then you got to put space and time in it. You got to add the elements all through vibration. You're not doing it, but your whole self's doing it. So you're very tired. Think about it. Not really. But you understand the amount that you're doing. But since it is not measurable, it is unreliable. It is not considered. Because you can't see it, touch it, lick it, stick it, smell it, shit it. If it doesn't have something tangible that I can wrap around and label it as something of progression, then it is shit-defied. It's worthless. It doesn't matter. It's fun. Come on, guys. Let's get back to reality. Hi-ho. Passion is the moment, no matter what the action is. And the action is not production. The action is communing with the now. Pouring your life into all that you are co-creating with, while all life that is co-creating with you is pouring through you, bringing you back to the moment. They've talked about many times, uh, I think the Pleiadians talked about it through Nora Herald. But now is like an eternal orgasm. Beyond that. It is. But it's immeasurable. But that's like what you can start to feel. That absolute time that everything is gone, that you have no care, no concern of the world. You are just absolutely in the moment, right? And then it's beyond that measure. And you feel that way all the time if you allow creation to talk to you again. But if you're a production of vibration, that vibration is considered itself production of time. Time is lack. Therefore, you can't feel reality is in the now. What you feel is what you know you've always felt. The division, the emptiness needs to be fulfilled through some idea, a etheric drug called an object that sits out there in time. And you got to bring it and reel it in and stuff it in your heart and say, I did it. Look at me. I colored within the lines. Hmm? The more and more you enact your truth, listen closely, okay? The more and more you're going to feel your bullshit. And then here's the part that no one can help you with. No one can guide you. No one can talk. Roxy can't talk enough. And you don't get it. No one can make you choose to stop your bullshit. But you are aware of it. The more times you say no when you don't want to do it, and the more times you say yes to yourself, that's the natural idea of becoming in alignment with your natural Nobody else, not alignment with some fucking rule that some dickweed wrote thousands of years ago and said, here's the way. You, with your heart, your isness is where you're going. You're going home. Right? Okay. So the more you do you each and every time, and the more you stop assessing you each and every time, Stop talking about you and what you have done. Stop. Be now. Let the now start to flow. Let it sweep you away. Let it take you to an experience that you can't keep up with. Because you can't label the goings on fast enough. You got to slow things down to get things back under control. No, you don't. That's what the now will do. It'll sweep you away. And you'll be this blissful moment. And everything that's coming through you and you are enacting, engaging with, is only valued in that moment of interaction. As soon as it is no longer, it is no longer. 
but you have to reference these things and you stop the now and grab time and go, oh, let's let's look at this. Let's 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 go ahead and assess. Come on, guys, gather around. Let's get our pens and papers and checklists out and let's look at this together. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's an object. We gotta call it something. And then you're gone. Then you're lost in time again. Then there's a chasm between you and the now. And now is all that is. So that beingness, that effortless, gives you a vibration sense of fulfillment without the objectivity being fulfilled with an absolute, explicit way to do it. A motherfucking goal. Huh? Get it? Makata yeto. Chufma. Your fucking heart tells your mind. No one can tell you your own bullshit. But I know you know it because you are naturally. If you're making an excuse, it's just simply because you're afraid to know that I found a place where I can become God. Damn. I don't get to keep myself busy with spiritual ideas of distractions. Getting up saying, how am I going to eat today? What am I going to wear today? How many times I meditated? Should I do yoga? What am I going to say? Should I post this? I got to do this. I got to do my work. I got to heal somebody. I got to do this. I got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to satisfy. Who? Your ego? The now is everlasting. The shades of time are strong and comfortable. They cool you from the searing heat and the blast of the now, the exquisite life that is. But you get there, each and every one of you. Every now you're there. Whatever your truth is, is what you choose. But there's always that grandeur of that moment of debate because you live in time and you're allowed to have that. I don't feel that truth. Fuck that. I'm doing this. But then at the same time, you know you want to do this. But for some reason, you're selling yourself on common sense to measure things and wait for the perfect timing. How can you have perfect timing when there is no time? Natural timing occurs naturally in the now. You just label this time because it's a synchronicity that you used as something awesome. But that's all the time, which means now, right? Okay. <sighs> yes, yeah. Booyah. All right. So this natural flow is something to get used to because the first lookings is what we discussed last night is emptiness. No purpose. As Tamsin said, uh, where is this all going? I mean, when are we going to get there? There is no all going and we're never going to get there. You realize that, right? There's never an ending. You tie things off with labeling strategic, let's say, uh, definitions of action. That ended, this begun. One door closes, another one opens up. Or you can open the fucking door back up. But those are all finites of humanity's failures and successes to wait or define itself in labeling. Slows the self down. You want to understand the now? Stop paying attention to time. Start being the moment. Allow everything to flow through you. Only choose that what you do. Whatever you don't want to do, don't do. And whatever you do want to do, get the fuck off your fat ass and go do it. Go and live. Go scream to the top of the hilltops. You are alive. Okay? You deserve to live. You're living through mediocrity. You're living through contrite. You're living through striction. You're living through bondage. You're living through tethers. You're living through rules and regulations of a humanistic society that only fashions itself in a time space now of everyone's agreement on what should be right. 
and that changes every fucking year. Every goddamn year you rewrite yourselves. You rewrite your fucking histories. Every year. Truly every now, but we need to give you time. <sighs> so what do you do? You live now. Okay? The thought comes up of action. Listen close. To fill your time with entertainment, don't do it. Have a little bit of patience and allow yourself to see that. And watch how this mind starts to talk to you differently. Because you're recognizing the filter and then you're going to start hearing a oh, you. Uh. Maybe yourself says, yeah, you don't want to go and take a walk. Let's put on the TV and grab a bag of Doritos. You think the whole self doesn't like sitting down watching TV, eating Doritos, having a cream soda, cherry flavor, black cherry, Roxy's fave. Hmm? Virgil's, great stuff. Okay. But you got to get used to you. What is hesitation? Fear of mistakes. Mistakes is measurement. Measurements of time. Therefore, hesitation in and of itself is lack, creating you in a paralyzed position, afraid to move because you might make a mistake. And you got to know the natural timing to finally do something. Fuck that. Get it on. Go live. That vibration starts to bring in because you're not filtering and buffering everything away from you. You're going to get, oh, do, 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 do. Takes a little while to get you going because your vibration of separation is still validated that you don't get things effortlessly. That you get things through effort. And when you are not efforting to get things, the ego is pissed off. So what are you doing? Let's say, come on, man. Get back on board. Get a go. We're going to work. Come on. Let's get, let's get going here. Come on. Chop, chop. And you're going, no. And you don't. And you don't take that action. You do that what you choose in the moment, and opportunity will show up. But see, here's the last key that really kicks yourself in the ass. You have no idea what opportunity looks like. Because opportunity looks like maybe one of five things. Money opportunity, love opportunity, accomplishment opportunity, betterment of self, education opportunity. That's pretty much it, right? A little couple things here and there. Oh, okay, I'm going to go to church so I can look good. That's a good opportunity. Ego, image. Okay, I'm all shiny, puffed up again. Look at me ah, with the church. Ah, 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 right? Okay, maybe I'll go take a course and get a little bit of education and get promoted at work. Okay? But you don't. The opportunity that's going to come is communion with the now. Feeling, vibration, my friends, returning to the natural. You are not physical awareness. You are awareness. You are thought behind the thought. You are vibration. You are isness in and of itself that cannot be explained. Any word that human has is diminished on what you truly are. How you exist in its time itself. You can't have that answer. But the one thing that is surefire every fucking day, you are that answer. You are living as existence. And how you choose it is up to you. Everything you've been is not your fault. Everything you will be with the knowledge that we presented to you is going to be your fault if you choose the diarrhea. But that's not your fault. It's your choice. We don't see it as a fault. You invited us have here to show you a relationship with lack so you have an opportunity in the now with a bliss ally of time to choose differently, to relate to a new truth instead of an old truth that creates an algorithm that runs amok as a lackful idea keeping you away from everything that you want. But what you want is lack, so that's why it's here, right? Okay, good, because you want time. So what we show you is how to choose differently. By not enacting what you've always done. So emptiness is going to envelop you. You're going to have no washings of the ocean upon you. 
you're going to be seeking thirsty, dry, hungry for purpose, meaning, contextual grandeur that says, I can poke it. I have something that I've done. I love that. Be John, big tree, airplane, great movie. Right? So what you want to do is be the passion of the moment. And that moment is making tea, watching TV, doing whatever, picking up a new craft, but not for a purpose. Not for something to do, something to do in the moment that is intriguing. And it's going to be a little boring at the beginning. Things that you don't know what to do. You're sailing so empty. You're like, God damn it, this is not right. Let me look at the Ascension world. Every day they got a goddamn task for you. Are you fucking kidding me? Today you got to do that. Prepare for the new energies coming in. You got to clear. Clear. You fucking CPR motherfuckers. Clear. <clears throat> what? What? Stop. Stop. Only way you can stop is recognize. Recognition is not in sight. It is not an objectivity. It is a vibrational feeling that you want to see how you feel about that shit. I don't want to eat good food, but God damn it, I need to. Because then I'll be healthy. People extend their lives all the time. <laughs> not really <laughs> they elude that they do by eating healthier and doing things and living longer well it's just a relationship with that that is a truth but they have no idea of the other reality but they believe that this is the way so they live longer so they can be more miserable because they love their lack right because everyone loves what they are right now you can't not have the reality that is not your truth impossible right so we show you the covets the extreme beliefs the truths that you found as a system to control your reality to relate to staving off the perils that were fed to you on a steady diet since you arrived here in mommy's womb right and you got that vibration every day and it's real and you're coveting and you're building, 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 and then you get in range and shield, 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 defense, 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 defense. <laughs> right? You want to feel reality. That's why you don't go look for things important to come along as opportunity. Opportunity presents itself every moment. Tell me. Go ahead. Sell me, you snake oil salesman. Sell me that the now is measurable. That now, no matter where you are, who you are, anywhere, in all this here and now, all that is, tell me something that needs to be extinguished from existence. When everything is unconditional. Perfect. It's a belief, my friends. That's what you need to accept and allow run through you. No matter how painful it is, no matter how scared it is, no matter how much you want to defy it, no matter how much you want to not do it, no matter how much cowardly grows inside of you telling you don't face them, don't talk to them, don't tell them the truth, don't tell them you're in a cult. Don't. Because they're going to what? What are they going to do? Only what fear says. Only the story that you told yourself. Uniquely yours. That keeps you paralyzed. But each and every time you take a chance on yourself. Each and every time you speak your truth. Each and every time you grow into an isness. A vibrational feeling that is not equated to the objects of importance. Of outcome. Of time. Of glory. Of envy. A responsibility of obligation. It doesn't have that label. It is no thing to be the experience untethered in the moment that is exquisite, priceless beyond orgasm. That's the effortless you want to be.
So let's just talk about now the dominion of jobs, J-O-B's. Job is a relationship to reality. If the job you're on, I want you to do this for yourself as a tactical approach. The job that you're on you hate, I want you to redefine that job in a moment to allow it to become something different. Then the job is going to speak to you. It only takes a couple of days. You realize maybe it's not the job you hate. It's the relationship you're having with the job that you hate. And then actually the job is a pretty good time because you're not going there dredging it. You've absolutely turned it because again, how can anything in the now be fucking hated? Only through a filter. Even when you find things that are not preferenced in your reality, people, places, you can most certainly move out of, but your relationship, that is escapism, then that's the lack and keeps you the same. But if your idea of relationship with them is my perfect joy is not to be here anymore, then you can choose that because you live in time and you live in a relationship that isn't couched in lack. Okay? But the relationship with the job is not that of I have to work. Because Roxy is doing what you call a job but she's not working. Dawn is the idea of, um, you all know, most of you know, she works for an airline in customer service. Now that's a pain in the ass fucking job for a lot of people. But you know what? She approached it one day differently, right at the beginning of the classes, way back a couple of years ago. And she changed her relationship with the job to where it became an adventure. She starts speaking her truth. She didn't care what the recording said. She didn't care about the guidelines. She started being a god in her own world, world and there were no consequences. Even people came at her. Well, maybe you shouldn't do that or I didn't need to do that. Bacock, shut your fucking cock mouth. She is her own sovereign dominion. And she found it. She no longer was a doorstep. People to walk over. She became king of her world. She ruled it with meekness, with vulnerability, which allowance with allowance of others. Not tolerance. Not tolerance. Allowance. And when there's no longer a vibrational match, get the fuck out. But is that rude? No, that's truth. So you got to be the relationship with your job. Understand your truth with it, firstly. And if it is not your vibrational match, you will walk away with no fears. You're going to be scared. But you're not going to validate, oh my God, what am I going to do? What about the paycheck? I can't quit now. I'll get to my paycheck because then I'll be rent and be due and then I'll have to do that and then I'll have to get a job before that. So we'll just time this all. No, you don't. And that's lack and that keeps the now away. And with your relationship with joy, what do you think is going to come? Shitty times? Vibrations of the same lack? Duh. Vibration creates reality, not action of measured movement with labels you understand your relationship with where you work in this and last paycheck next week and you got rent due and all this stuff but your truth is you know what i'm done it's okay turn around and walk away that's truth that's vibration that's authentic that allows the now to show the motherfucking up without you fucking it up with your buffers Buffers of lack. How is it going to happen? When's it going to happen? What's it going to be like? Is it going to be right? Well, what about this? When you ask a question in lack, as soon as you get the answer, don't you have another question? If something comes along, tell you this is going to happen. You're going to, go, yeah, but because your relationship with that is empty. You're so empty and you're looking for objects to fill you. And when emptiness comes, you actually think it's empty. But you know what it is? It's polarized. So the emptiness is actually full. But you're not accustomed to those vibrations because those vibrations speak nothing of that which you know yourself as. Separated. 
an individual island that looks back at creation as an object instead of subjectively. Okay? So masters, understand feeling. Don't look in the ideas of the mind grabbing on to things. It is a tough habit to break, but you got to be observant. We taught you the ideas about the language, the words that you use. And every time you try to put something in the label it and put it down as an assessment, if it has any kind of creed about an object, you don't like this, so you're doing this now. That's bullshit. You let go of things without not liking them or liking them. They're gone because they're no longer your match. You're literally focused on your truth now. And that truth then is there. But you don't have to disdain it by saying, that's not right. This is. That's arrogance. That's accomplishment. That's holding on to a cycle. You guys got to be masters with this. It's good tea. I believe we're out of water. So, Michelle will send you some of the classes, or Katie can send them to you. So you can have an idea. But truly, the kingdom is not done. Here, here, Let, let's look at this. Let's look at the kingdom this way. You've been living it. Let's accept that firstly. This entire world is your truth. Your lack, your separation is the only way you knew. You started out creation from a standpoint of separation. Each individual you, okay? Forget about connection to the whole and the whole self and all that stuff. That'll just fucking clog your mind that you need Drano. Stop. What you need to do is look at the now. And you are this birthing yourself in awareness. You chose your life on earth the best way you could. It can't be the worst way. It only can be the best way. Because no reality is created without what? Real. Your truth. Your real creates reality. Okay? Vibration 101. What you put out is good. What you give back. Perfect. Okay. So you are a new standpoint of awareness, creating God. And you go through the eyes, eyes of life, you know, what you're looking at, objective, objective, blah, 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 assessing, assessing, and always doing that because you were taught that. That's your default. All right. That's your kingdom. That's your truth. That's why it's here all the motherfucking time. See, you guys are so hell bent on looking why am i attracting that person in my life they're a vagrant why am i having to not do this or have, why am i having to have to do this why 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 right so these realities are cycles that's the kingdom that's why it's always so excellent that you get this experience feeling I mean, the details change, but you're still feeling that same self, that emptiness that is cycled to fill itself through objects your entire life. Hmm? There was a couple that walked around the mall, Colin and his wife, Edie. And they're well into, I think Colin is now 86 and Edie was 92. And they were walking around the mall all the time. And Roxy and Tommy frequent the mall, so they've seen him for the last year or so, right? They've seen him for the last year, walking around Starbucks, saying hi to each other, talking. The daughters come in, they're wearing shirts. And, and Colin used to wear the shirt, this is my wife, and stuff like that. And they're still holding on to identity. They still want to have connection. They're lovely people, of course. Compassion, fulfillment would melt anybody's heart in the mall. They all loved him, you know, and the wife. And Roxy saw Edie one day and said to Tom, she's tired. She went home. She went home a couple of weeks ago. Because the relationship with the cycle was just no longer 
valid. The cycle of becoming, the cycle of always. 86 fucking years. And Colin is still trying to be something. Even your richest, most powerful men can't sit still. They'll pretend to relax, but they won't. There are a few on this world that find their comfort in the moment. When they have masterful lives, they still have black, they're not awake, but that doesn't matter. There's no one this or that. It's all a big conglomeration of truths, individual singularities. And when they show up in your world, you understand them as you understand yourself. So the cycle that you are always in is a constant kingdom and you are so good at it. Look around. You have everything you always need. You have everything you always want. And whatever you don't want is what you are wanting. It's not the details. It's the relationship to reality objectified. And as soon as you become whole with that, it becomes subjective and you can't feel that way ever again about that idea because you've coalesced it into the unum, the unum of you, your world. But your world has potential now because you've chosen to see something that is possibly not a truth. Truths are in time and in now. The truth of time keeps you that vibration relationship in the now, not in time. Because the now has that. The more now you are, the more truths become valid to you, the more you feel natural. Your life changes. Your memories change. You become new creations, new friends, new ideas, new opportunities. But not opportunities of grandeur and hope and dreams and fulfillment and ideas of outcomes. Vibrational relationships that are frequency matched to the authentic you are, which is absolutely orgasmic beyond. But you keep doling yourselves down as long as you keep thinking. Thinking draws only upon itself of time and the relationship and whatever memory you're pulling from is a vibration of that standpoint and that is your interlaced now. And that's your reality is. So your kingdom has always been and it shall ever be. It just depends on where you want to place your truths, to create your reality, to have your experience. If I can take away your polarity, I do you a disservice. When you get to know your polarity, you are extremely masterful, and then you will understand polarity as not. Because polarity is unconditional, bent into a frequency of truth that says objectified, polarized, measured, truly. I think that's all we have. Here's what we are. Again, we're just like vibrations, parts of you, parts of, as you maybe you guys noticed, I got a lot of Sly in me. Now, why do I choose to co-create with Sly as a expression? Because it's part of me. So I take Sly's vibration, let it pass through me, and I express it as a truth. And you guys feel the familiarity of Sylvester in the class because he's here. But he's not a label. He's a vibration. Right? That's why you guys sometimes pick up on you feel grandma that died. You feel somewhat of some importance. There's no longer in your life, but you feel them. Well, because they're here and now. Their signature, their vibration. We are vibration. We are not imaged. We are signature. And you know Sly, you know Roxy, and you know yourself. Right now, have fun with the outside when it comes along, but don't place a meaning on it of something to be measured, then you'll fuck it all up. 
What you want to do is get to know the signature of you. And the only way to do that is take the physical idea actions. Hmm? And we're not talking about just movement, the physical choices, the relationship of truth to yourself in this expression as a human. And that changes your relation from humanity to relating to humanity, which is potential for a homo divinicus. Understanding time as a relationship instead of part of the elemental signature truth as an experience. Homo sapien, homo galacticus has time. Time is an element that is part of the equation. You have space time, homo galacticus has time space. Okay? But they still have that element. You don't have that as part of the structure for the experience. In other words, you're not walking onto a hollow deck that's pre programmed third density. Homo divinicus is not assigned. Homo divinicus is a new species. God remembered. You guys try to name them ascended masters as if they went back up there and sit at some fucking throne with a whole bunch of masters eating grapes. No, that's the pictures you place on things because you're so lowly, you got to have some kind of go get them goal that's going to be, look how grand I am. This is your intimate relationship with yourself. You got to be balls to the wall, honest. You got to know when you're bullshitting yourself and the only thing you have to do is say, no, not today. No matter how much your, your self is screaming, hollering, you should change, you're going to go, not today. That's bullshit. I don't need to know the answer to this question. I don't need to claim this new truth. I don't need to do things. I am. And that's enough. And then now comes. It attracts. The now attracts. Time repels. Any questions? Kashniato Ayyapa. Eyes. Got them. Anything? Shit pickles. Love shit pickles. Not a great term. Fucking shit pickle. That was so funny. I don't know where I found that. I guess I found it in the now, right? Mm. Hello, Evelyn. Good to see you, Roxy says. And Lorraine. Lovely. Okay. So next week you have, you all know Malatar. Not all of you, but a lot of you know Malatar. Well, Malatar is uh, vibration, as you all know, intelligence. So uh, the Gestalt, the group of speakers, that represent that vibration of Malatar are going to teach you creation interaction workings, kind of like what we did with probable selves a little bit yesterday, just to kind of bend your mind out of the frequency of looking what's wrong with me and what's right with me, always in the distraction world, to give you something that just can't be comprehended from a logical standpoint of labeling, yet it feels so fucking awesome and alive at the same time. So that's next week. Okay, Chef Pickles, my lovelies, donuts and Netflix, here I come. <laughs> That's my Gina. All right, uh, I'll bring Roxy back. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you.